So for our last class today, um, we have a number of things to, to cover. So we're going to go through this January 2019 paper. Then um, I did promise you guys that we would look at the question three from the paper three, when you have to give that creative response. So we would look at the creative response as well. And then you all had homework for me. We had to correct the January 2017 paper. So, um, we were supposed to do the, um, the number three on the paper three. Yes, homework, and the I number three, paper three. And I did a creative response for you guys so you can see um, if you all want to either do a poem or a play or a short story, how exactly you could do so. Because I know a lot of you all are really comfortable doing the argumentative um, essay, um, just writing a brief argument. If you want, some of you all are writing the short stories to me. So um, that's really good. And if any of you all are um, into literature and you want to compose a short play or a poem, then maybe you could do so in the exam. So this is the January 2019 paper. Um, the instructions are the same. You have the one hour and a half to do so, 60 questions. So let's look at the first section. And I did send this in the WhatsApp group for you guys to look at before. And um, right off the bat, when you look at the, the, the sentences, you can see a lot of um, questions being repeated. A lot of questions. Oh, Shivanan is with us. Shivanan, mm -hmm. let me know <laughs> if you are hearing us. You have to join your computer's audio. Let me tell him to join his computer's audio. Right, so the first section, the instructions say each sentence in this section has one underlined word or phrase. So choose the word or phrase that is closest to opposite in meaning to the underlined word. So here you are looking for the antonyms. You are trying to find the words that are opposite in meaning to the underlined words. And I'm sure you all have seen um, these sentences before. So um, Jaden, you would do this first section for me. So All right. it, and then tell me what the answer is. Um, okay. I kind of made it as I'm going to um, He distinguished after avoided the press whenever he was on holiday. Um, C, contacted. Yes, it is C, contacted. Good. Number two. Uh, there was a decline in airplane travel after that incident. Um, A, increased. Very good, A increase. Number three. Paul's attitude to visiting the cave was one of indifference. Um, C, enthusiasm. Very good, C, enthusiasm. Number four. Being friendly and helpful is characteristic of most persons from that area. Um, yeah. B. A? B. Yes, the answer is B, uncommon in. Very good. And uh, number five. Many teenagers and even some parents do not agree with the amount of restrictive, restrictiveness in today's society. Um, C, permissiveness. Yes, C, permissiveness. Very good. So I'm sure you guys would notice that a lot of these questions, um, we met them before, right? I'm sure you all saw the questions before and that's why it was so easy for you. So the next section, we'll be looking at items six to 10. And for this section, this is the uses section. Sorry, the, the spelling section. So it says in the following sentences, one of the underlying words may be misspelled. So perhaps a word would be misspelled. If not, and you think that the sentence is fine, then you select D, no error. So um, Marie, you would do this section. Okay, miss. So we're starting with number six.
Si Miss. Marie, not read in the sentence for us. <laughs> Maria, are you going to read the sentence for us? No, miss. I just read back. Why? <laughs> I want you to read the sentence for you and then give me an answer. <laughs> okay. After embarrassing his colleague, his conscience bothered him and he eventually apologized. Uh huh. I choose C. Yeah, so this C conscience. How do we spell conscience? Miss, I just know it wrong. <laughs> but, you have to, but I know that you know it's wrong, but I still want to ensure that you guys know how to spell it. So yes, the answer, um, the word that's spelled wrong is conscience. How do we spell conscience? Anyone wants to help Marie? The S. Where's the S missing? C-O-N-S-C. Yes, ma'am. So because remember, I told you all that you have to see the word science in conscience. So it's con and science. So the S is missing here between the N and the C. Good. Number seven. Okay. It is my privilege to give you some information concerning proper nutrition. See again, miss. C, no. N U T. Okay. P R I V A. It's not A. Miss? But then there's no error? Yes, there's no error. The words are spelled correctly. Privilege is spelled correctly. Information okay. and nutrition is spelled correctly. So D, no error. Number I'm eight. Sure clearly. Okay. And you, you want me to um, enlarge it for you? I have it on my own screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Whenever there is a food crisis, the people always experience shortages of basic necessities n e c e s s i t i e s necessities shortages d miss you think that's the error Mr. Wala, check in the spelling. Crisis. There's two I's, no E. C R I S E S. Yes, Ravi, you was correct. Crisis is the error. It's supposed to be C R I S I S. So this E here is supposed to be replaced with an I. So the answer is A. Number nine. The nurses, uh, Miss was that word? Allotted. A allotted separate quarters because the main building did not have enough rooms for them. B, Miss. Yes, B, separate. How do we spell separate? Miss. Anybody wants to help Marie? Marie? Marie's calling for help. She just wants to give us the answer and not spell. S E P E R A T E. Yes, this E here is supposed to be an A, so it's supposed to be S E P A R A T E. Very good. And the last one for you, Marie, number 10. B, Miss. Marie, after read the sentence. Okay. <laughs> Marie, are you reading the sentence for us? Yes, miss. I didn't realize when my mic was on mute. <laughs> his intelligence rather than his height was the deciding factor when considering him for the job. B. Yes, B, height. How do you spell height? With the E, miss. What? H E I T H E. Yes, you have to switch the E and the I. So it's okay. supposed to be H E I G H T. Very good. Um, the next section, you guys, this favorite section. So 11 to 15, it says um, you have to select the option A, B, C, or D that best describes each of the sentences. 
So um, if you think that this that there's no error, this sentence is acceptable as it stands, then you select um, A. So what I want you all to remember for this section is that, um, oh, hey, am I saying she's not hearing? Is anyone else not hearing? So for the section, we have items 11 to 15, where um, this is basically the error recognition section. So um, what I want you all to pay attention to is that sometimes what the letter stands for changes depending on the paper, right? So um, in the past papers that we have done, you guys would have seen that A represented um, the option that says were repetitive or contained redundancies. But in this instance, A represents the sentence is acceptable as it stands. B says the sentence contains a cliche or a misused metaphor. C says the sentence is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. And D in this instance says the sentence is too wordy that is repetitive or contains redundancies. So remember, Pay attention on the day of the exam to see what each letter stands for, because sometimes the meaning for A and D, um, it changes. So for this section, um, Ravi will do the section. No. The new disciplinary methods had a positive effect on the student's behavior. See? Yes, yeah, see, what's the error with the sentence? And don't tell me what C stands for. I want you to pinpoint like the exact error from the sentence. Miss, is it the um the, uh, the apostrophe in your wrong place? No, the apostrophe is in the, in the correct place. Anyone thinks they know what's wrong with it? Positive effects? Yes, they say affect. Well, it's supposed to be effect. Effect, yes. Oh, it's supposed to be effect. I think you read it as effect, Ravi. You probably corrected it. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, you, you corrected it um, for yourself. You didn't realize. But that was the error. They had A, F, F, E, C, T, and it was supposed to be E as an effect. Good, number 12. Seldom do people declare that they are not the products of their environment. A? Yes, the answer is A. Um, the sentence is acceptable as it stands. Number 13. The major ran up the street like a, a house on fire and shouted with all the strength he could muster, sounded the alarm. B? For number 13. B as in boy? Yeah. No. Try again. Boy. Um. B? You saying D now? Yeah. The answer is D. Good. What is being repetitive or redundant here? Because D says it is too wordy or repetitive or contains redundancy. So what is being repetitive or redundant in this in number 13? Because yes, the answer is D, but what is being repeated? Anyone knows? So Ravi, how do you know the answer was D? I 
I mean, I, I, I guess. Is this <laughs> sounding the alarm? Something to do with that? Yes, it has something to do with that. That was a really good guess. Good thing CXC doesn't ask you all to correct the, um, the mistake. The redundancy here was, if you are shouting with all your strength, then you are obviously sounding an alarm. Because as long as you are... As long as you are shouting with all your strength, it means that you are sounding extremely loud. And this is equivalent to sounding an alarm. So the redundancy here is um, shouting with all the strength and sounded the alarm. It, it's um, these two phrases, they say the same thing, just using words, um, different words. Yeah. Number 14. If I were the captain of the West Indies cricket team, I would attack the batsman with my fast bowlers immediately after the luncheon interval? Is the answer C? The answer is C, good. What needed to be corrected? Is it the um, I will attack? Yes, it's supposed to be what? I would have or something like that, Pastor. The tense is wrong. The tense is wrong, uh huh. It's just supposed to be I would attack the batsman. So will is supposed to be wood. And number 15. I only, um, only question for the homework too. Yes. So you're changing the homework answer. <laughs> no, I had that too. Oh, okay, great. Number he, 15. He advances a step or two to meet his attacker who suddenly became alarmed and retreated back four or five paces. That is um D. Because, yes, D. Because I know this one. Um, <laughs> retreated back. Yes, very good. They retreated back. Because when you say retreated back, it already means to go back. Very good. So let's look at the, uh, the next section. The next section is um, the uses section, where there's some, an error with the um, with maybe a word in the sentence or perhaps Perhaps there could be no error in the sentence. So the issue here is that the sentences could be unacceptable because of the inappropriate grammar, the idiom or vocabulary, but some may be acceptable. So just know that in each sentence, no sentence contains more than one inappropriate element. So for this section, um, Felicia will do this section. So Felicia, would you be reading um, the sentences for us? Yes, miss. Okay, great. So you can begin with number 16. The exhibition is expected to be a major attraction, not only for adults, but, particularly, but particular to school children in that area. What's the error? C. C, good. Uh huh. It's supposed to read what? Particularly. Good, particularly. Very good. So the answer is C. Number 17. In a house for Mr. Biswas, Naipaul shows that how a man may struggle against great odds to achieve those things that he most desires. A. Very good, it's A, because the word that, um, the word that isn't supposed to be there. So it shows how a man may struggle. So the answer for 17 is A. Number 18. I believe that if his attitude improves, his general performance will also improve. D no error. Very good. D no error. There's nothing wrong with this sentence. Number 19. Peter has dengue and feels weak, so he is unable to participate in the inter school games. A. Very good. Have is supposed to be what? 
has. Great job. And number 20. Too much students entered the competition. Only one of them was good enough to reach the finals. The answer is A. Yes. So we have to replace much with what? Many. Many. Good. And you see here we have the usage rule with much and many, much being used for uncountable nouns and many being used for countable nouns. So in this case, we could count students. So much would be inappropriate here. We have to put many because many is used for things that we could count and we could count students. Good. The next section is sentence completion. So you have items 21 to 25. So each sentence has either one or two words missing. So you have to choose from the four options, the word or the pair of words which best completes the meaning of the sentence. So you have to try your best to complete the sentences, choosing one word or a pair of words. So Kimberly, you will do this section. Some persons, although health conscious, are usually immune to incurable disease. No. B? Is that that? Next. What you have? Okay. You actually corrected yourself because you said immune to, and then after you said no. So, no, the answer is not B. So you're trying to say despite people are health conscious, they're usually something. Susceptible, so infectious. Very good, yes, I see. So they are unusually susceptible to infectious diseases. Very good, number 22. Most parents do not something in discipline from their children. A. Very good. A, tolerate. Number 23. The period requires us to radically restructure the economy to something it from what was basically a colonial, colonial economy to a modern balance and something economy. The period requires us to radically restructure the economy to B? Yes, B. You have to, we have to transform it and ensure that it, um, it is diversified. So the answer for 23 is B. 24. The lawyer gave his friend some good advice about taxes. A? Very good. A. And 25. The help. The help I had was early, so she something the task of preparing supper. supper. Mm -hmm. I have so she was relieved. Very good. A relieved off. Good. So I see you guys are getting the hang of this. Let's see what the next section has. So the next section is the poem. And um, do you guys remember this poem? Anybody remember this poem? No one remembers this poem? Have you seen first this time in my life I've seen it. You all saw this poem anywhere before? Not really. Not really? Okay, let's look at this poem. It is entitled Accounting. So it says, nights too warm for TV were flung outdoors to the porch. So inside it's making too warm, so we're on the porch now. Citronella candles sent in this space. So you know what we use citronella candles for, right? Mosquito. Yes, to get rid of mosquitoes and insects when you're outdoors. So, citronella candles sent in the space between us 
Our faces are glow in gold light. She crowds the card table with coin banks. So who usually has a coin bank? A child. A child. So we, we, we can assume that she is a child, right? So she crowds the card table with coin banks and abacus. Do you guys know what an abacus is? Abacus is a Chinese calculator and what is be using. The Chinese calculator. The Chinese people are seeing me using it. Okay, um, let me see if I can find an image for you all so you can see what the abacus is. And they're using that to calculate with the This is an abacus. Exactly. Chinese people alone is use that. <laughs> so this is something that um, some of you all probably had when you were younger. You guys ever had this? So we usually, um, when we're teaching kids how to um, count and stuff, um, a lot of parents buy this for their child so they can slide the knobs across and then how to count and so on. So this is what you call an abacus. So she crowds the card table with coin banks and abacus, five and ten dollar rolling paper or a tiny ledger. Then it goes on to say, I count, line the coins in neat rows, the abacus clicking out our word. So she's using the abacus to count how much money, how many coins um, she has. How much can we save? Stack up against the seasons, winter coming. So basically they're trying to say that, you know what, we need to be a bit more um, careful with our money. We need to see how much we can save because winter is coming. Her tightly braided hair turning white, her hands quick filling the paper casings like homemade sausage. So they're describing for us the paper cases by saying it looks like homemade sausage. And, they, and this is exactly what they're storing the money in. There's money in the bank downtown, but this will keep at home. Because, you know, sometimes we have money in the bank, but then we tend to keep some money at home. So they're saying that this money that they're counting, they're going to keep this money at home. And where are they going to put it? Buried in jars beneath the house, the crawl space filling up, packed solid as any foundation. So because this, this is a child and there's a crawl space, it means that there's a very tight space and only a child could crawl underneath there and fit there. So where is the child hiding the money? The child is hiding the money in a crawl space beneath the house. So you know sometimes in the American societies and even some persons, they have their homes built like this where um, the house is built a little above the, um, the ground and there's a crawl space beneath the house. So this is where this child is gonna hide the money. So let's see what the questions are looking like. It says the activity described in the poem is what? So what are the kids doing? What is the activity described in the poem? B, miss. Anyone, anyone knows? B. B. Yes, the answer is B. The kids are counting money. So for 26, the answer is B. Very good. 27, which of the following words best describes she in the poem? So the girl in the poem, which of the following words can best describe, um, can best describe her? Is she thrifty? Is she moody? Is she missionary? Or is she extravagant? If you had to describe this girl, just think about what she's doing. She's counting money and what is she saying? That we have to be careful, we'll keep this at home, we'll yeah. stack it up here because, um, you know, winter is coming. Is it A? It is A. She is very thrifty because if someone is thrifty, it means that they are very careful when it comes to money and, and they're using it for resources and so on. So she's very thrifty in that, you know, she's being know. very responsible, very careful when it comes to the money that she's counting. 28 says line three of the poem is an example of what? So let's look at line three of the poem. It says citronella candles sent in the space. So line three of the poem is an example of what? C. Yes, it is C alliteration because we have, we know alliteration is repetition of initial consonant sounds. So we have these citronella candles, the C um, being repeated here and sent in the space. We have the S as well being repeated here. 
So we know we, we know what repetition is when you keep saying the same thing over and over. Um, what is assonance again? Let me see if you guys remember. Anyone remembers what is assonance? Assonance is the opposite of alliteration. So if alliteration is the repetition of consonant, of consonant sounds, Miss, then assonance the is the resemblance of sounds. Um, that is a repetition of vowel sounds. Very good. It is a repetition of vowel sounds, and we find the vowel sounds not at the beginning of the word in, um, as in alliteration, but we find it within the word. So very good. And euphemism. Do you guys remember what is euphemism? We have to memorize that literary devices handout, you know, because when they bring the poem for you all, you see how you see they um, mentioning the different literary devices. So you need to remember what the literary devices are. So what is euphemism? Let's see, we have some revision to do. We have to try to learn that literary devices handout because they are gonna bring the different literary devices for you guys as options. So you need to know what the devices are mean. No one remembers what is euphemism? This is a, a mylar and direct expression to something. So yeah, I, when I gave you all the handout, I did give you all the definition in that um, it said that it is a mild or a polite way of saying something that is rude or taboo. So for instance, um, instead of saying that someone died, because that may be a bit harsh to say, we could say that the person kicked the bucket or they went to meet their maker. So you need to um, please revise these literal devices, the handout that I gave you guys. Please learn the devices because they are going to be popping up in the, um, in the exam. 29 says the comparison between the paper casings and homemade sausage is a reference to what? So when they said um, here, the hands shape? quick fill in the paper cases shape? like homemade sausage. Is it the shape? Very good. It is the shape because they're trying to give us, um, they're using a simile here showing us um, what the paper cases look like. And in this case, they look like the homemade sausage. So it's describing the shape. And thirdly, the crawl space most likely refers to what? So when they mention that um, there's a crawl space, what are they basically referring to? An area under the house. Very good. It is an area under the house. The white people are silent. <laughs> So for the next extract, I don't want you guys to get offended by what is being said here. This is an extract where um, it, it is entitled, Who Does What? Um, this one might cause a bit of an argument because some of you all would say, yes, you agree with what is being said, um, said here. And some of you all would say, okay, no, you don't agree. So let us not get too upset when we um, find out what this extract is saying. So it says, who does what? So it is quite outmoded today to label certain work as being suitable for only men or women. For example, we see men and women working in dressmaking, cooking, hairdressing, the law, and a variety of other jobs. Men work in heavy industries which call for physical strength, but apart from those, both men and women have shown equal aptitudes in a wide range of occupations. Many men like pottering about the home and indeed would do more in the home and enjoy it if public opinion had not ordained that most work in the home is women's work. There has been established a curious code of behavior regarding men's and women's jobs. A man can work in a cafe, wash up and clean the floor, but he would be doing a, a woman's job if he did the same work in his own home. He can lay the table in a restaurant, but apparently his whole personality changes when he passes through his own front door. For then, he and his sons are considered incapable of laying a table, filling a salt cellar, or washing a teacup. He can make beds, clean and provide morning tea in a sleeping car or on a train, but has no appetite for those simple jobs in his own home. 
In the army, within a week, he has accustomed himself to making a bed, lighting a fire, and pressing his clothes, but after discharge, he is treated as incapable of turning a mattress or giving a hand with the washing or ironing. Similarly, women all over the country decorate their own homes, distempering and painting in a highly efficient manner, yet wielding the paintbrush in the decorating business is considered a man's job. It is a mystery to me how painting became the complete monopoly of men. The deafness and skill which women now have shown in other trades seem particularly suited to painting. Now, I can't imagine how, if the painting trade had been monopolized by women workers, the same irrational attitude would have been adopted, and for no other reason than custom, men would not have sought work in that field. Today, with so much mechanization and automation around the corner, we shall have to reorientate. The woman in the home does a manual job with saps of physical energy. We may soon find that a man's job outside the home calls for less physical energy than the one done by his wife in the home. What is woman's work and what is man's work should be determined solely by the aptitude of the individual. And it is in the interest of the family and the country that this new approach be adopted. So what did you guys think about this comprehension? Uh -huh. So what they say here is that, you know what, we shouldn't label it as being a man's job or a woman's job. The key word here is aptitude. And we know that aptitude is like our natural ability to do something. So, you know, some women are just good at things and some men are good at things. So they're saying that we shouldn't put labels on jobs. But if someone has the ability to do it, if they will be successful, then let them do it. So do you all right. agree with what the passage is saying when they were saying that, you know, um, like for instance here in this paragraph, when they were saying that, you know, if a man works in a restaurant and he does, you know, like the cooking and cleaning in the restaurant, when he's at home, he, he operates as though he can't do anything in his own house. I've seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> So and then it even Maria wanted to say something. Anybody ever saw this happen before where there's a man who um in his line of duty it allows him to probably cook, clean, mop the floor, so on. Um but, but when he's in the house he moves as though he's incapable of doing anything and he can't even wash his own teacup <laughs> or make his own bed. So that's what they um they sort of poking at here. And even when they say we're women, that some women, you know, they are the ones who actually do the painting in their homes, who do all the physical work. But then if they go and seek a job in society that requires a lot of physical strength, then they're being turned off and saying that, you know what, this is a man's job. So what this comprehension is basically saying is that, you know what, um, we should determine roles and jobs based on a person's aptitude, which is their natural ability to do something. So based on if they are able of doing it, regardless of their sex, they should be able to occupy whatever job they're doing, um, they want to do. So 41 says, which of the following is suggested in the first paragraph of the extract? B, miss. It is B that men and women are equally able to do many jobs. And the key word here, equally able, because they did say that we have men who are in hairdressing, we have women who are probably doing like carpentry and stuff. So the main thing that they were trying to say in 41 is that men and women are equally able to do many jobs. 42 says the main intention of paragraph, th of paragraph two is to show that what? So paragraph two is when they were talking about the man who works in the job that is very domestic, but when he reaches home, he, he can't basically do anything. So what was the main intention of paragraph two? Is it D? It said D? Yeah, it I have not, B, miss. It's task at home and work. It's actually not D, the answer is B. A man has contrasting attitudes to the similar jobs done at home and at work. This was the other, um, the closer answer. Um, this was the close answer, Ravi. 
But the best answer was this one. So when he has contrasting attitudes, it yeah. means opposing attitudes. So his, he has one attitude at work and one attitude at home. So the answer was B. 43 says the main intention of paragraph three is to do what? So let's look back at paragraph three. So paragraph three is this one when they were talking about women who uh, um, they decorate their homes, they do the painting, but then painting is considered a man's job. It is basically occupied by men. And um, they said that, you know, some people would have that irrational attitude if women decided to come and sort work in that field. So looking back at the options, what is the main intention of paragraph three? Miss. Yes, Marie, what you had? A. Not A. Is it C? Yes, it is C. To demonstrate the irrationality of decisions regarding a man's and woman's work. Very good. 44 now um, ask according to paragraph 4. Mechanization and automation might lead to what? So due to mechanization and automation, it might lead to what? C? It's not C. That was a better answer. B, miss. It's not B. So it's between A and D. A, miss. It's not A. <laughs> it's actually D. That the housewives would be in more physically strenuous than men's job outside the home. Because remember, they did reiterate here that um, the woman's job is um, the... The housework is physically strenuous, but opposed, um, opposed to the man's job outside the home where it doesn't require that much physical strength. 45, which of the following devices does the writer mainly use in the passage to present her argument? So based on how the argument was presented, what did you guys see being used a lot? Did you see sarcasm, contrast, repetition, or exaggeration? B? It is B contrast because she she was she was constantly showing us the opposite side of things, so she was using contrast a lot. And forty six, it says according to the writer, which of the following should determine what a man's work and what a woman's work is? Aptitude B. Yes, it is B aptitude. So the writer was trusting in the end that you know what we need to focus on on a person's natural ability to do something. And not what society says is a man's job or a woman's job. So for 47, um, do you guys remember this? He's the man? Yes, that was homework. <laughs> yes, this was for homework as well. So he's, he's the man. So this is a very short speech. Um, it always keeps popping up. So it says, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the candidate for Dimsville. He's the man who will make all your dreams come true. He's the man who will fulfill all your wishes. He's the man who will stand by you through thick and thin. Our opponents say that he comes from a foreign country and he is not one of you. I must thank them for their kind comments because that is just what you need. His exposure to a developed world. He is equipped with the best ideas that will create opportunities for you. Don't you need steady jobs? And how about a school like that which the other areas have? Yes, my friends, you need to live like valued citizens, not like oppressed slaves in endless destitution. Your lives are not a journey into the promised land. You wander in a vast wilderness where hostile forces of humanity hound you with relentless cruelty. Your daily bread is sickness and worry, hunger and disease. Your hovels are dens of misery filled with empty hopes and despair. Have you considered the future of the children? Look at this man. 
The man who will make your dreams come true. The man who will give you your wishes. The man who cares enough to come to your village. So I know you guys had this extract for homework. Let's see how well um, you all understood what you had to do for homework. So 47 says, the purpose of the speech is to do what? The? So why was this speech here? What you had, Ravi? B. You had B for 47? B as a dog. Oh, yes, yeah, so it, it is D, to persuade the audience to vote for someone. Very good. 48 says, this speech was most likely given at a what? Political meeting. It is C, a political meeting. Number 49 says, the speaker addresses the audience as you in order to do what? So why was you being um, used when the audience was being addressed? Miss? Yes? Yes, Marie, what do you have for this one? D. It is D, to make the audience feel he cares about them. Good. Number 50 says, the speaker suggests that because the candidate comes from a foreign country, he will do what? C. It is C, he will be an advantage to them. Very good. I hope you all correct in your homework one time. <laughs> 51 says, when the speaker says you need to live like valued citizens, he attempts to do what? D. You had D as in dog? Unfortunately, apparently. <laughs> the answer is D. He oh, wanted yeah. to change the villagers' view of their lives so that they choose his candidate. 52 says the name Dimsville is suitable for the village because what? So why was the name suitable for the village? D? Ah, it's not D. So why was the name Dimsville? How are villages usually named? Amen. It is C. It is named after someone who used to live there. Very good. Number 53 says in paragraph one, the speaker repeats the words, he is the man because he wants to do what? So why are these words being repeated? What was the purpose of the repetition here? Is it C? It's not C. It's actually not C. B? It is B, to emphasize the power the candidate possesses. And remember I told you all that whenever you see questions where they ask about why this is being repeated and so on, just remember that we always repeat things for emphasis. So the best response was B, to emphasize the power the candidate possesses. And um, 54, Jada, and I want you to give me the answer for 54. Which of the following devices is not used in the speech? Jada? Have we lost Jada? Kimberly, are you still with us? Eh? Yeah. Yes, Kimberly, I want you to give me the answer for 54. So based on the speech that I read, which of the following devices did you not see in the speech? Either A or D, miss. Okay, you narrowed down pretty good. Mm -hmm. A. The answer is A, very good. <laughs> Because we did see the rhetorical questions, they ask a lot of rhetorical questions. So we didn't see any pun. So the answer for 54 is A. Very good. So the last section, and I want you all to pay close attention to this ad because this is the first time that you all are seeing this advertisement. 
So it says, really follow an advertisement carefully and then answer items 55 to 60 on it. So let's see if we can understand what this advertisement is saying. So it says all this information in one small package. And they're giving us a visual here. All this information equals to this small package, meaning that just in this one book, all of this information, it is mentioned in this small book. And it says, discover Asia land island. So we know that it's an island they're talking about. We get the idea of the coconut tree, the steel pan, we see people sailing, we see the taxi service and tourists dancing and stuff. So let's see what the rest of the advertisement says. So it says, discover Asia land isle. Discover Asia Land Isle is the complete country guide, compact and portable, with information and contacts for everything from accommodation to restaurants to touring. Need to know where to catch a taxi, hear a steel van, go bird watching or windsurfing? It's all in one convenient place. Discover Asia Land Isle is elegant in its design, colorful and simple to read. Open its pages and be mesmerized. Fall into its wonderland. Experience travel like you've never have before. Discover Asia Land Isle. Available free at major hotels, at La Vista National Airport, and online from our website. And it concludes here by just putting the name of the website. So what is this advertisement about? It is exactly what the, the heading says, Discover Asia Land Isle. And we know that it is a country guide for you to know, um, for tourists, so that tourists can know where to stay for accommodation, for restaurants, to taxis, and so on. So let's see if we can answer these questions. 55 to 60. 55 says, this advertisement most likely appeal to whom? Tourists. Who would be interested in this advertisement? Tourists, eh? Tourist. It would be a the tourists because they are the ones who will be interested in finding out um, about accommodation and taxi services and so on and all the fun activities to do on the island. 56 says the equal sign between the stack of books and the book Discover Asia Land Isles suggests that the guide is what? So when they put that equal sign there, what does it suggest? Convenient. Not convenient. A oh, not A. C. C. Just remember, this was the image. They show the stack of books, the equal sign, and this. So what they're trying to say, not that they condense all of this in this one magazine. C, miss? C. It is C. It is compact. Very good. It's compact because um, we just have all this information reduced to just one single guide. 57 says, the author repeats the words, discover Asia Land Isle to do what? So why are the words being repeated here? See? When, when he keeps saying discover Asia Land Isle because he wants people to do what? A C. It's not A and it's not C. What's in B? It is B, to encourage persons to, to visit the country. Because they keep saying discover, discover, discover because you want persons to be interested in coming to visit the country. 58 says the phrase available free suggests that the guide is what? B. Very good. It is B. It's not for sale. So you can't purchase this guide anywhere. It is available for free. You can't purchase it. 59 says which word in the second paragraph of the advertisement is used figuratively? So remember we could use words literally. So exa um, exactly the dictionary meaning is literal meaning. Or words can be used figuratively where you don't necessarily mean dictionary meaning, but there's a higher meaning to it. So in the second paragraph, did you see the word fall upon discover or experience being used figuratively? So let's look at the second paragraph. It says, discover Asia Land Isle is elegant in its design, colorful and simple to read, open its pages and be mesmerized, fall into its wonderland, experience travel like you have never before. Discover Asia Land Isle. So let's look back at the options. We have fall, open, discover, and experience. See? It's not see. 
Is it experience D? It's not D. Not? No. So we left with two options. A says full and B says open. Which one? Well, that has to be full. It is full. Because what does it say? It says fall into its wonderland. They don't literally mean you trip and you fall into its wonderland. So they're using the word fall figuratively here. So the answer was a fall. And 60 says persons can most likely obtain a copy of Discover Asia and Isle from where? Just remember the most likely option. Because mm -hmm. yes, the others, you could get it from there, but the most likely place that they could obtain the copy. Hotels? Not the hotels, because the hotels only card it towards, um, towards a certain website group of persons. The yes, the website, the answer would be D, because the website, a greater number of persons could, ac could access the website. But in terms of hotels, it means that you physically have to go to the hotel to get the copy. So the most likely option was the D, the website. So what did you think about this paper? It was easier compared to some of the rest. Yeah, it was a bit easier, right? A lot of the passages, they were fun passages, um, things that you all could relate to. And then they even, um, they even went on to include some questions that you all saw before. So I know you all saw some of the um some of the questions before. So let me just go into um our next activity. Do you all have any questions thus far? Somebody, anybody could take a picture of the rest of answers and send it on your group, please. Send it now. So remember, um, we looked at the paper three, right? Last week we looked at the, well, this Monday, sorry. We looked at the May 2018 paper three, just to refresh in memory as to what this paper was about. So just for y'all to remember the extracts, y'all remember the first extract was from the newspaper. And um, so we have the first extract that was from the newspaper. Y'all remember this, so the farmers won't focus on the environment. And we had to answer some questions on this. So we established that this article was about the farmers and we did um, get the viewpoint from Mr. John Brown, the agronomist. And what was he arguing? He was saying that um, they need sufficient sponsorship from the Ministry of Agriculture. And then he went on to say that, you know what, um, greater focus should be on agriculture, but particularly the small farmers. And then he even mentioned some other issues that, you know, some time should be invested in the youths because they are the ones who don't really understand how important the environment is. And they're, they're engaging in reckless activities like starting bushfires. And he was saying that we need to educate the youths. Then we had the bee farmer who went on to say that, you know what, we need to have a replanting program because of urbanization and all the um, setting up of houses, the removal of trees um, was prevalent in society. So he was saying that forestation, so the replanting of trees is one way in which, you know, we could be concerned about the environment. And the key thing here is that, um, the farmers believe that the government should be concerned about climate change because this is an issue that's happening in society. So do you all remember this newspaper article? You all remember this? No? On the paper yes. from paper three? Yes, this was the 2018 paper three that we looked at on Monday. Yes, miss. Very good. And the second text, so I'm just going through this briefly because we're going to do the third question. 
And the second text was a song by Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell when she was um, repeating that they paved paradise and they put up a parking lot. So she was basically emphasizing that, you know, they removed the trees to construct the hotel with the boutique. Then she said, what did they do with the trees? They put them in a museum. Now we have to pay to see the trees. And then she even went to criticize the farmers that they're using the DDT, which is the insecticide that's harmful to humans and the environment. And lastly, she said that, you know, even her old man, her dad is being affected by what's taking place that he had to leave her. So she was just basically emphasizing um, the practices of humans that they paved paradise, paradise meaning the environment, nature, the trees and so on. And they put up a parking lot because now the humans are inhabiting everywhere. And the third text was a poem by Prosper Sanchez where it was entitled Reflections of the Times. In the first stanza, he was talking about the city lights, about how persons, um, what they have in their homes. And he's saying that the fame and riches cause persons to not be so concerned about the environment because of what they have in their homes. And he's saying that the city lights, um, in the nighttime, it looks as though everything is okay. But when daylight is prevalent, you see the sky being haze, you see the smog in the sky, um, you even see the, um, the streets are traffic filled and the emissions are deadly from the vehicles. And he says all this, the reality of the situation, it, it is obviously masked by the city lights and the night. And he's saying that the sun rises and sets in a polluted breath. So he spent a lot of time talking about air pollution and about um, the price we pay for urbanization and the negative impact of, of urbanization because we have humans here who build homes and even um, they, they drive their vehicles and so on. He's talking about the price we pay for urbanization and the unfortunate price is that, you know, it results in air pollution and damage to the environment. So we did look at um, questions. One, where we outlined the main issue in each of the three texts. Um, we went on to question two as well. So we, we covered question one and, and question two as well when they were talking about the oral and written presentations. And I wanted to give you all a response for question three. So question three was the response that you guys were a bit, um, you know, a bit unsure about because of how it requires you to think outside the box and just come up on the spot with something that's really creative. So um, it says create a response based on one of the issues listed on 1A on page eight. You can use drama, poetry, lyrics, or song or prose. And it says to write your answer on the ruled pages. <laughs> Everybody probably sad class. This is the last class. <laughs> oh, please. You're probably pretending. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the creative response. So um, some of you all actually emailed me your responses, but which format do you guys feel really comfortable with? So if, in question three, are you all comfortable in writing a song, a prose, poetry, drama, an argument? Which one do you guys favor um, a lot? Arguments. The argument? Argument. Anything else you all prefer? So everyone, everyone prefers the argument. No one wanted to try something different. Why, why are you all not trying something different? Are you all scared? You're unsure about how to do so? What's the, what's the problem? Or oh, you think that under exam conditions, the argument is the safer thing to do and is the one that you could get the, the most marks? The exam was your no. <laughs> yes, and, your most marks. yes, and I did tell you all that the exam, guys, just remember that on the day of the exam, right, when you get this question, listen, the exam is not the time to be experimenting to see if you could do something else, right? So if you know that for question three, you are custom writing arguments, you write an argument. Don't try and sit down in the question and try to compose a song, right? The exam is not the time to be experimenting. You experiment now as a home and the exam is not now. You guys can sit and experiment. Sit and try to write a drama, try to write a poem, try to write a song or a prose. 
and see which one you really like. But on the day of the exam, that's not the time for you to be experimenting with new ideas, right? You guys stick to what you know. Okay? Just talking about the exam, you heard anything else? Um, this evening, we're actually having a PTA meeting with CTS. So I would, um, I would give you some feedback about that. But what I wanted to let you all know as well is um, don't pay attention to all the things that you keep seeing in, in the groups because I know that there are persons who are sharing false information. Even like when you all read news articles or you see something being circulated, just remember in argumentative writing, we learned about credible sources. So if it's not from a credible source, please disregard the information. So the credible sources would be if it comes from CXE itself, so once you see the CXC logo and so on, the official CXC document, or if it comes from the Ministry of Education. And I don't, I don't mean the memes that you see with the Ministry of Education and somebody put a quote over it. That's not a credible source. It must have a um, Ministry of Education official letterhead, right? So only pay attention to news where you see the official letterheads from CXC or an official letterhead from the Ministry of Education. Don't pay attention to the pictures that people are editing and circulating because one of my cousins sent me a picture with, with the Minister of Education and somebody put a quote over it saying that Trinidad not agreeing with the exams and on sort of that. And he was really paranoid and he messaged me to ask about it. But don't pay attention to, to sources that aren't credible. Only, only take information as being um, solidified and accurate if it comes from CXC or the Ministry of Education. And when they are releasing information about that, they would use their official letterhead. So look for the CXC letterhead and the Ministry of Education letterhead. If not, don't pay attention to all the fake news that you're seeing. So I wanted to share with you guys, I know that um, we are all comfortable doing um, the argument for this, but I wanted to share with you all an attempt at a poem. Right, so I'm gonna share with you all an attempt at a poem. So remember the question said that um, for 1A, and we did um, know that for 1A, they asked about the issues in the three texts. So this poem is about the issue that took place in text one. And when we went through text one a while ago, um, text one was the article with the farmers. So the article with the farmers, they talked about um, the farmers' concern about climate change and its impact on their viability and sustainability. So remember that in this article, the farmers, they were actually discussing about, um, they were talking to the Minister of Agriculture, telling them, telling the minister about their concerns. So do you have any questions before I begin? Just remember what this, um, this, text was about because this creative response this poem is about that text so in that text the farmers were talking to the minister of, of agriculture telling the minister that you know they need sponsorship they need the replanting program they need youths to be educated because what's happening now in society they don't really um they don't really approve of the practices right because the minister is not doing what he's supposed to do so the poem is entitled dear mr unaffected so we know that the poem is geared towards someone um, um, a male person perhaps, and the person is, is a pun on the, on what is being said here, there Mr. Unaffected, because the minister here seems to not be doing anything about the situation, right? So it says, climate change is threatening our lives, but you seem to not be so wise. It was easy for us to be deceived in the rally your speech we believed. So we get an, uh, um, Right off the bat, we know that we're talking about a political setting, and this Santa really tells us that um, we are talking about the minister because well, how our ministers are elected, we have the rally, they give you the speech, and then you believe it, right? So the person is saying here, it was easy for us to be deceived in the rally, your speech we believed. Empty promises and broken dreams, your constituents are just hoping for a gleam. Educated fools are guiding this country, are you waiting for everyone to just go hungry? Sometimes we feel we have to do the teaching. Sustainability is what you should be preaching. You can't even get the youth to listen to you. So how are you going to change their view? All your focus on is cutting down the trees, but have you thought about how you're affecting the bees? You said you cared about the environment. 
However, such projects your funding brings such bewilderment. Sponsorship is all we ask, but that even seems to be a task. We the farmers are the future, so help us be the main producer. Let's do what is right and fight a great fight. I'm tired of our fears falling on deaf ears. Viability should be our end goal. If not, maybe we should return to the pools. This is the last time we're begging for an intervention because after this, you will be remembered for your declension. Earth has so many things done to her and what she needs now is just one armor. So basically, you can try to encapsulate what was being said in the article in the form of a poem. If you think that in the, um, in the exam you could do so, you can feel free to do so. So, do you have any comments or questions? I am so convinced now this is not something I'm going to do for exam. <laughs> Why? You think that it's hard to write a poem in the exam? No, I haven't write a poem in a poem. <laughs> no, that's why the, um, now you could probably try to experiment and write. But if you feel more comfortable writing the argument, go for the argument. Don't write something that's outside of your comfort zone. Although this was just to show you guys that um, how you could encapsulate the point, the main issue, and you could put it in, in the form of poetry. Because they give you different options that you could use. So this was just one option showing you how you could use poetry to talk about the issue that was being um, addressed in one of the texts. So anybody else would just be sticking to the argument? No one wants to venture into the poetry or maybe you write a little short play on it. How do you guys feel, that, feel about this, um, this question? Anyone is actually intrigued and they want to write a poem now? No? Marie, you want to write a poem, Felicia? Yes, I feel I might just give it a little practice while at home. You think you might what? I might just give it a little practice while at home. Yeah, so while you guys home, you could experiment because they give you different things, right? So while you're home, you could try to experiment and write something. and But in the end, choose the one that you're most comfortable with, right? So Kimberly, for question three, what do you think you'll be doing? You think you would use... um. You would try to compose a song, you would use a short story, you're going to use an argument, or you're going to write a poem or a play. An argument. An argument. Okay. Um, Jaden, what are you going to do? Argument. Argument. Um, Felicia, what are you going to do? A song. Oh, you're going to try to compose a song? Very good. So is it that um, you're going to attempt to do that because you like music and you like writing music? Yeah, but I wrote a few songs before, so it's not really new to me. Oh, very good. And this question, remember, this question, they're really looking at your creativity. So they're looking to see if you can really think outside the box and come up with something really creative. So a song is very creative. Um, Marie, so you said that you would be sticking with the argument, Marie? I know Ravi said he would stick with the argument. What are you comfortable with, Marie? Okay, it appears that we have lost Marie. But um, as you guys are home, try to Try your hand at doing something different, but in the end, stick with the one that you're most comfortable with. So do you all have any questions about um, number three? I will send this to you all as well. So I'll send this to you guys in the, um, in the WhatsApp group as well. Do you all have any questions about um, number three? It is really an opportunity for you all to just respond to the issue in whatever platform that you feel most comfortable with. So if you if there's an issue, if you feel comfortable presenting the issue in an argument, write it in an argument. If you feel comfortable presenting the issue in a song, then do the song. If you're really good at poetry, write a poem. Or maybe you're into drama and you like to you like to read a lot of plays, then you could compose a play. 
or you could compose a short story because they say that you could use prose as well. So just remember here what they're looking for. They're looking for the content to make sure that whatever you have included here, that is really, it really um, encapsulates the message or the issues being addressed in the text. They're looking to see how well you organize your ideas, um, the effective use of language. So don't forget your vocabulary and stuff, your word choice and your unique voice or style. So try to add your own personal touch to, um, to your work and make it unique because unique is what would stand out for this question. So your creativity and, and would, is what we're looking for for this question, how creative you could be. Even when you're presenting your argument, um, you're gonna be marked on how creative you could be and what points you could come up with. So do you all have any questions? Do you guys have any questions? Are we all clear on what you do for this, um, for number three? Yeah. Yeah, Shailen, you have a question? Oh, my mic on. <laughs> Anybody has a question? Okay, great. So you guys, that's January 2017 paper for homework. Um, did you all time yourselves and take one hour and a half? Ravi, did you time yourself? Yeah, but it didn't take me so long. It took me about 15 minutes. Oh, okay, great. And um, did you use time to check over as well? Yeah. Also, the check-in of our time is included in 15 minutes? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. And why, and why did you finish so quickly? It was kind of easy. <laughs> because you saw a lot of things being repeated? Yeah. Okay, great. So That's just, the effect. Yeah, just that was the way to the, the answers were for the previous ones. Very good. And that was the aim, because for multiple choice, everybody should have done so many multiple choice papers that when you guys um, go into the exam, I want you to already know all the answers because you would have seen probably 99.9% .9 of the paper before. So that's the aim that when you keep practicing and practicing, eventually when you get into the exam, you would have already seen the questions before. So let's see what this paper has in it. So the first section, it says each sentence in this section has one underlined word. Choose the word that is closest to opposite meaning to the underlined word. So here you are finding antonyms. And you would notice from doing all the past papers, right? Do you guys see synonyms coming a lot or antonyms? From doing the past papers. Which one do you think CXC brings more? Antonyms? Yeah, they tend to bring antonyms more. So just pay attention to that. Um, you never know if you all might be unfortunate and get the synonyms, but they tend to bring a lot of um, a lot of the papers. They have antonyms and not synonyms. So that's one thing to um, to note and pay attention to. So for this section, um, Felicia, you would do this section. So you'd read the sentences and then tell me the best answer. So the word that is opposite in meaning to the underlined word. The manager decided to inform the staff about all complaints received from the customers. And this is D. Yes, it is D, compliments. Compliments is the opposite of complaints. Good. Number two. There was a decline in airplane travel after September 11, 2001 attacks. A, increase. Very good, A, increase. Number three. In these difficult economic times, many organizations retrench workers only when absolutely necessary. 
Be employed. Very good. Be employed because we know retrenched workers means that you dismiss them. Good. Number four. While the employers approved of his work habits, they objected to his radical views. D? Yeah, B? D. Yes, D. Many teenagers and even some parents do not agree with the amount of restrictiveness in today's society. C, permissiveness. Very good, C, permissiveness. And uh, how many of these questions you guys saw before? Out of the five? All of them. All of them, yes. So this section uh, should have been pretty manageable for you all because we saw all these questions before. The next section is equivalent sentences. So it says each sentence in this section is followed by four sentences. So you have A, B, C, and D. Choose the sentence nearest in meaning to the original sentence. And well, of course, please be sure to read all the options first before you make your selection. So um, Ravi would do this section. So you would read the sentences to me and tell me the best answer. Okay. The lion which had fallen ill was lying in the den, famished and upon the point of death. C? Ah, not C. D? Yes, it is D. The sick, the oh, sick wow. lion was lying in his den, extremely hungry and on the point of death. Because if you're famished, it means that you are extremely hungry. Number seven. John told his parents in no uncertain terms that he was going to university as soon as he left school. C? Very good, it is C. Number eight. I cannot understand why you have done this since you tell me that Mark means a lot to you. A? Very good, it is A. Realizing that her suitcase was left on the bus, the woman desperately tried to attract the conductor's attention. B? Yes, the answer is B. Very good. And the last one, number 10. Much is being done to develop tourism in our country by providing good hotel accommodations and facilities. C? Excellent. The answer is C. So, so far we have done one sixth of the paper, the first 10 questions. How many did you all get wrong so far? I only get that six wrong because I change it. <laughs> and that's an adult I guess yourself. one. So just remember, we just want the first 10 questions. So uh, you're supposed to, the most you can get wrong in the first 10 is just one, right? So try not to get more than one wrong in the first 10. The next section is error recognition. So yeah, again, you have to see like the options A, B, C, or D. And I did tell you all to pay attention for on the day of the exam, what each letter represents, because sometimes the letter change its meaning. So in this case, A, the sentence is acceptable, then you see like A. B, if the sentence contains a cliche or a misused metaphor. C, if the sentence is incorrect grammatically or faulty in diction. And D, if the sentence is too wordy that is repetitive or contains redundancies. So Jaden will do this section for me. You have items 11 to 15. So you would read the sentence and then tell me which letter you see like Jaden. Um, it's not. Like I have to do a different section. I don't like this section. What to this section, Jaden? Get this section. Okay, Jaden. So when the exam reaches, you're going to tell the examiner, um, excuse me, I hate this. Well, I have time to section. read it excuse over me? and over, like here yeah, on, on the spot. You can't at this point do what? No, no, no. Like for the examiner, I can read it over and over. Or I can go back to it. But here, like, I have to do it like on the spot. Well, we will help you, Jaden. <laughs> All right. So number 11. There are many who have not considered the need to abstain from alcohol, but abandoning drink for sub 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 yeah. I pick B. Because they say 
they need to abstain from alcohol, but abandoning drinking is kind of the same thing. Yes, and even for sobriety, if you're sober, it means that you're not drinking, you're abstaining from alcohol. So yeah, you have a lot of repetitiveness there. So the answer for 11 is D, good. Number 12. He wanted to beg for his old job, but at ship had seal, and he wanted to simply play the hand that was dealt him. Um, B, cliche or mysterious metaphor. Yes, what's the cliche? Um, that ship had sailed and played the hand that was dealt him. Very good. And you say they want to do the section, Jalen? Hmm. <laughs> Number 13. To attract more business, the store offered transportation at no expense to the customer. Uh, e. You think the sentence is acceptable? Yeah. Nothing is wrong there. Attract more business. No, I don't think so. Okay, well, something is wrong there. It's not A. Um, In the first half of the sentence, something is wrong. Business. What, yeah. Ravi? Is it more business to attract more business? Right, and remember, when do we use more and most? Do you all remember? When do we use more and most? Jaden, do you remember? I think more is like when you're comparing to like one other thing and most is like the top kind of thing. Right. So you use more when you're comparing two things, right? So like she is more attractive than me, like that. Yeah. And you use most if you're comparing um, more than two things, right? So um, do we say more business and most business? So is it business, then more business and most business? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Drop the more. Right. So, yes, you have to exclude the more here. So, the sentence should read to attract business. The store offer transportation at no expense to the customer. Very good. So, the answer for this one would now be C because it is faulty in diction because the word more isn't supposed to be there. Good. Number 14. Uh, does that repeat question? Oh, Is yes. So, which means that you should know the answer. Yeah, un unfortunately not. <laughs> If I were the captain of the West Indies, um, like a, a <laughs> if I were the captain of the West Indies cricket team, I would attack the batsman with my my fast bowlers immediately after the lunch or interval. Um, C. Yes, it is C. Let me see if you remember what's the error. The wool. No, it's not wool. No. Um, yeah, I do remember. It has to do with from I, the error is somewhere here. Intense? It's intense. So it says were past oh, tense. Oh, I so would I attack. attack. I would attack. Very good. So the answer for 14 is C. Number 15. From the examination results, it was quite clear that Joanne's work was not up to mark. So she missed the boat. Um, B. Very good. B, the cliche, missed the boat. So, Jaden, yeah. you see, you, you, you didn't even want to do this section. You see how I did in the section? Yeah. So that shows that maybe I've been revising or doing your work, <laughs> practicing. Jaden, yeah. don't, don't try to burst my bubble. I am under <laughs> the assumption, Jaden, that you have been revising and you have been practicing, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes, very good. Thank you, Jalen. Um, the next section is usage. So we know that um, some of the sentences may be unacceptable, either because of the inappropriate grammar, the idiom, or the vocabulary. But then some of the options, they may be acceptable. So there's, no, there's not more than one inappropriate element per question. So, questions 16 to 20. Kimberly, I saw that you rejoined us. Do you want to do questions 16 to 20? No, thank you. No, wh why not, Kimberly? Miss, you know me and you, she says, not a friend. Oh, same thing Jaden said, you know. Jaden said the same thing a while ago when it came to um, the error recognition. 
But look how well he did. So let's go for Kimberly. Miss, oh gosh. Okay, let me try. Yes, try Kimberly because I feel as though you might, you might surprise yourself. Overcome my fear, I ran past my home without realizing that I had done so. Do you know error? There's an error. So I'm helping you out here. There is an error. Okay. A? Yes, the answer is A. Very good. Because past tense here has been marked two times. We have run as the past tense of run, and then past as in P A S S E. So the past tense is marked here. We don't have to put the ed at the end here. So I ran past my home. Good. Number 17. In a house of, in a house, I can't see this. Couple. I'm a zoom again. In a house for Mr. Biswas, Nightball. Nightball shows that how a man may struggle against great odds to achieve those things that he most desires. B? There is an error. Miss, I said B, you know. B wrong? Oh, yeah, B is wrong. C then. It's not C. It's actually A. a? Now, I post yeah, shows yeah. how a man may struggle. So, the word that isn't supposed to be here. So, now, I post shows how a man may struggle. Um, Number 18. I believe that if his attitude improves, his general performance will also improve. Dino error. Very good. Dino error. Number 19. Pray. Your deeds and living well with one's neighbors are essential to spiritual health. Um... I want to say A. Yes, the answer is A. What is it supposed to be? Not the action free, but we want the noun. So it's supposed to actually be prayer. So prayer, good deeds, and living well with one's neighbors are essential to spiritual health. Good. And number 20. The athletes with the most with the worst performance claim never to have used dangerous drugs found on their their possession. See? Yes, the answer is C. Not on their possession, but in their possession. So we had the wrong preposition being used there. So it was supposed to be found in their possession. So you see how well they did Kimberly? So next time when I call you for a, sec a, a section, don't second guess yourself. That's like what Jaden did too, and look how well he did and you did. So, so far we completed 20 questions. How much did you guys get wrong so far? We just completed one third of the paper. Still one wrong. Still one wrong, very good. The next section is a poem, and you guys have seen this poem before, not so? Plenty. <laughs> Too many times. So you have to read the poem carefully and then answer the questions based on what is stated or implied. So it's entitled, A Bad Day. It says, I cannot smile today nor be pleasant today. I do not like people today. I particularly hate children today. Today I am sad. Today I am mad at everything and everybody I hurt today. I can't love today nor see beauty today. I wish the wind away. No, I can't be happy today. I looked down the future today and began to die today. So we, we know that this person is just basically trying to tell us about a bad day that they're having and how they are feeling. So similarly to how you guys feel when you guys are having a bad day, you can't smile, it can't be pleasant, you hate children, you hate everything, right? So. Cynthia Wilson here is telling us how she feels because she's having a bad day. So 21 says, which of the following is not true of the poet today? So key thing here, which of the following is not true? Kim, are you back with us?
Like I said, I don't think he might back with us. Felicia. Felicia. Yes, miss. We do 21 to 24, right? So um, 21, which of the following is not true of the poet today? So what is false? Says C. Let's see. D. It's not D. B. Yes, it is B because B says she cannot be sad today. That's not true because remember she is sad. So the answer for 21 is B. And Felicia, 22, which of the following words best describes the poet's mood? So based on how the poet is feeling, which of these words best describes the poet's mood? D. Very good, it is D, melancholic, because melancholic is a synonym for sad or depressed. And 23, the word particularly in line four is nearest in meaning to which word? So let me show you line four again. C. So line four says, well, before that we'll read line three, it says, I do not like people today and particularly hate children today. So if you had to replace the word particularly, which of the following options you would use? It says, I particularly hate children today. C, especially. Very good, it is C, especially. And 24, which of the following is an example of alliteration? C, wish the wind away. Very good. C, wish the wind away. Um, 25 to 30. Um, Denzel, I saw you just joined us. Did you um, complete your homework? Yeah, Ms. Adam. I'm correcting from where you're calling from right now. Okay, so you want to give me the answer, so 25 to 30? Okay, no problem. So 25 says the poet repeats the word today for what? Emphasis, B. Good, B, emphasis. 26 says I look down the future today is an example of what literary device? Beside it, as I said. Why? It, it's saying I look down the future, I think that's a... I, is that kind of like a personification, but I ain't seen personification there, so I don't know the answer. Oh, that's a, they can't leave anything blank in that exam, you know? Yeah, I know, I know. So try to give my answer. Just pick one. Uh, try to do the process of elimination. I would say a metaphor. Good guess. The answer is metaphor. <laughs> because you, you describe in the future as in you're looking down the road as in a head. Right. The answer is B metaphor because we know for one, and let's do a process of elimination, right? So we know for one is not a simile because in a simile we must have like or as. Yeah. We know our onomatopoeia as a sound word and there's no sound word here. Yeah. And well, an apostrophe is just basically like an exclamation. So we know it's not that. So by a process of elimination, it is B metaphor. So good guess. Okay. 27, the words no see beauty in line 10 mean that the poet cannot what? I put D, appreciate anything. Good, D, appreciate anything. 28, the mood of the poem can best be described as what? It's depressing. Good, C, depressing. Um, 29, the poet began to die probably because... I put C, but I'm not sure. I put C, future events did not look promising. The answer is C, the future events did not look promising, so that's why. I, I think we do this, we do this sometime, I don't know if it's in yellow. Yes, we did this, uh, we did this poem already, because Ra, we did say in the beginning that yes, we did this too many times. I, I wish I do remember where we did it though. Yeah, this was in a lot of um, past papers. 
This was not a different year. And 30 is D. And 30, the poor's intention is to do what? Tell us of your unhappy condition. Yes, it is D. Tell us of her unhappy condition. Did anybody get all correct in this poem? Well, I get one wrong. Tell that in that right. Are you all right? Very good, Ravi. What did the rest of you all get? Not sure? You're a little bit unsure? So this is the first time that you guys are seeing this comprehension. It says, um, it's entitled The Sisters. So it says, over the years, Marta had sent many warm and friendly messages to, Eli to Elena, inviting her to visit Laura and assuring her that she'll always be welcome. But her prodigal sister never replied. From time to time, however, traders brought news that Elena's marriage to Iaco had been blessed with two sets of twins, that Iaco had succeeded his father as ruler of the kingdom of horses, and that their marriage was a stormy one. For a long time, there was no further news until one day, a traveler told Queen Marta that Iaco had been thrown by a wild horse and had broken his back that Elena had lost both her beauty and her mind and after shouting night and day that the kingdom of wild horses was an accursed one, she had escaped from keepers. They searched high and low for her, but she had vanished without a trace, the, famous, the traveler said, shaking his head sadly. The queen immediately summoned Leha and ordered her to send search parties to all of the countries bordering on the kingdom of wild horses. Go to the ends of the earth if you have to, but bring my sister back to Elora. Whoever finds her will be amply rewarded. Queen Marta said to the trackers, traders, and interpreters whom Leha had, had recruited. But after years of futile searching, the search parties returned one by one and reported they had found no trace of Elena. It's as if your sister has vanished from the face of the earth, Leha said. I hear you, Queen Marta said, and yet I feel my bo in my bones that she's still alive. Leia had led one of the search parties when she returned. Her hair was streaked with gray and age, had mapped her rough hewn face with lines as delicate as spider webs. The first time that Leia stepped into the audience room to report about her travels to distant places in search of Elena, she was both surprised and pleased to see how Queen Martha had aged. When the eyes made for the smiling Leia said to herself, it's as if her face had beaten very gently against the years, for she could see quite clearly how time had changed what was once an ugly countenance into a beautiful one. When a shaft of sunlight touched the cloud of white hair on the queen's head, it became luminous and a welcoming smile lighting up her dark face lifted lay her spirits and made her heart sing. And somehow all the hardships she had endured traveling across parts of Savannah's through densely wooded valleys, over mountains, and down turbulent rivers were forgotten. So what was this comprehension about? Finding the queen's sister. Okay, finding the sister, uh-huh. What again? So we know Marta is the queen and Elena is the sister. And then Elena got married to Yako, they had twins, and then what happened to Yako? He was thrown by the wild horse and he broke his back, right? And then Elena, she sort of went a bit haywire. She lost her beauty, she lost her mind, and then she was being kept um, hostage and then she eventually, um, she eventually escaped from the keepers. And then when the queen learned about this, you know, she wanted to send these search parties to find her sister. And then during this time, what happened? Did they find her sister? Oh. No, she Stop. What happened to her? She disappeared. Yeah, they, they couldn't find her and they said it, um, it appeared as if the sister had disappeared. And then what happened to Leha and the Queen during this time? They got old. Yeah, they got old just to show you, you know, the length of time that they spent looking for the um for the sister. Good. Anything else?
What sort of relationship do you think Leha and the Queen has? Very close personal relationship, apparently. <laughs> so let's see how well you all understood this passage when we look at the questions. So, um, well, Ravi, you would answer from 31 to 35. So it says the style of writing in this extract can best be described as what? Is it descriptive? You think it's descriptive or it's more narrative? I was kind of pulled between both of them actually. It is actually a narrative because it um it appears as if a story is being told to us because it says it began with over the years and then they went on to trace the story for us, right? So the answer is B narrative. 32 says, what do the words their marriage was a stormy one imply? Is it D? D, good. Their marriage was filled with disagreements. 33 says, the instruction, go to the ends of the earth in line 12, implies that they should search. Every accessible land, A. Eh? Good, A, every accessible land. And 34, the literary device using the phrase as delicate as spider webs is what? Is it a simile? Yes, it is a simile because it's being us. compared. Tell me, Ravi, let me hear your explanation. <laughs> oh. Why is it a simile? Because it's comparing it to um, a spider web using the word as. So yes, and in this case, we're using as because we need a simile. We could use either like or as for our comparison. Good. Um, Jaden, you would answer 35 to 38. 35 says the writer implies that Leha was what? Who was Leha? <laughs> Jada, did you um disappear? Did you fall asleep? Disappear? Okay, so we uh, we seem to have lost um, Jaden. Felicia, you would do this um this section, thirty five to thirty eight. It says the writer implies that Leha was what? So who was Leha? Did we lose Felicia as well? Felicia, have we lost you? Okay, I think we have lost Felicia as well. Um, Kimberly, are you still with us? See? Um, she is not Matt, her sister. Try again. A. She's not A. She's not a leader of the Queen's Army. She's not B, the household servant. Yeah, she is B. She's a household servant because remember in the beginning, the Queen summoned her. And who would the Queen be summoning? If someone is a servant who, who works for the queen, right? So the answer was B, household servant. 36 says, which of the following is an example of contrast? So when you read the lines, which of the following lines show us contrast? A? It's not A. No. So just remember, contrast is telling us that when you read the sentence, you're saying two opposites in the sentence. D. It's D, lighting up her dark face. And we have the two opposites, light versus dark. So the, uh, the answer for contrast is D. 37 says, the cloud of white here. 
So when um, we say people out of white hair, what does that mean? Personification. Very good. It is the personification. And number 30, it says the concluding sentence of the extract suggests that what? So what does the last line suggest? Do you want me to go back up to the last line? Yeah, miss. Yeah? Yeah. So the last line, it says, and somehow all of the hardships she had endured traveling across park savannas, through densely wooded valleys, over mountains, and down turbulent rivers were forgotten. So let's look at the options again. What does the last line suggest? D, the problems. Very good. The D? answer is D. The problems which Leha had encountered in the search were forgotten. So the next comprehension um, item is 39 to 47, and it's about the traditional family unit. So let me just read this for you all briefly. It says, when the traditional family unit is discussed, it is usually in terms of the external social changes that are threatening its existence as an institution. Little thought is given to the internal problems of normal homes. The central problem for most family members is, of course, how to get along with each other. This internal matter is not without its external implications for only where there are orderly and peaceful families can there be an orderly and peaceful society. Of all the changes that have affected the family in recent years, by far the most significant has been the increase in the number of mothers of school-aged children who have taken outside employment. In Canada, some 75% of women in this category now have full-time or part-time jobs. For the most part, economic imperatives have left women no choice but to work for money. An income sufficient to maintain an average family style took one Canadian 48 hours a week to earn in the 1950s. It takes two people 65 to 75 hours a week to earn that income today. The conflicts between work and family life and scarcity of time to devote to children have taken a personal toll on women in the form of stress and depression. Obviously, individuals under stress are harder to deal with than those who are not. So the tensions of work are carried over into tensions in mother-child relationships. Men too report feeling stressed out and squeezed between work and family obligations. Males raised in the tradition of mothers doing everything in the home are inclined to be lax in doing housework and awkward in the unaccustomed role of actively nurturing children. But if a two-income family is to run smoothly and fairly, the household workload must be shared. Another profound change in family relationships lies in the relatively high incidence of divorce and marital separations in Western society. The fact that so many couples feel they must go their separate ways illustrates just how difficult it is for people to live together satisfactorily at the best of times. So do you all agree with what is being said in this passage? Anybody can relate to this? They're talking about, you know, the traditional family unit, uh, how things aren't like how they used to be long ago. So like for instance, um, if someone was working for just 48 hours a week, that could sustain the family, but now both persons have to work for double that, that time to get money to maintain the family. And even one of the problems is that, you know, um, with families is how to get along with each other and all the conflict and the stress from work and stuff it's resulting in families um, in a lot of separations and divorce. So did y'all like this passage? Did y'all understand it? Was it easy to understand the writing? Yeah, it was okay. not straightforward for me. Yeah, it was a bit straightforward because they didn't really use that many 
um, complex vocabulary words. So it was a bit, um, it, was a, it was a bit simple to understand. So 39 says, according to paragraph one, which of the following results from conflicts between family members? So they're looking at the end results from conflict between family members. Anyone knows the answer for this? Which of the following results from conflict between family members? It would be. It is a disorder in societies. 40 says, according to the extract, all of the following threaten the existence of the family except what? So which one doesn't threaten the existence of the family? B? Yes, it is B. It is conflicts between employers and working parents. Good. Uh, 41 says the word that is closest in meaning to imperatives in line nine is what? So which word is closest in meaning to the word imperatives? Yeah. Very good, A demands. 42 in paragraph two, the writer compares income in the 1950s to income today to show that what? Why was that comparison being made? Put it is a people today work longer hours for the same pay as in the 1950s. That is so true. <laughs> 43, according to the writer in paragraph 3, lines 13 to 20, tensions in mother child relationships can occur because of what? So, why are, why are there tensions between the mother and the child? Felicia, what you had for this one? I'm still looking for the answer. You're still looking for the answer? Jada, help her out. So remember they said that mothers now, um, before mothers never used to work, but now they have to work. And then they were saying that the mothers have to go to work and they're stressed out at work. And then when they come home, they bring their, their stress from work in the house and that could result in, in tensions between the mother and child relationship because when the mother comes on the mother might quickly snap at the child for something when in reality it's because the mother was vexed from before. So which one do you think is the best answer for 43? A? Yeah, it is A. Mothers are under stress. I put B. <laughs> now, the answer is A because the, the mothers are under stress. 44, the writer's main purpose is to do what? So what was the main purpose here that the writer was trying to achieve? Ravi. Is it C? Yeah. So let's see, to highlight some of the internal problems threatening the family, good. 45, the writer's main intention in lines 15 to 20 is to show that. Denzel. What's that? Your answer for 45. D? You have B or D? D, D as in dog. Oh yes, it is D. The sharing of the household workload can help a two-income family to run smoothly. 46, Felicia, couples feel they must go their separate ways because of what? So why, why are the couples going their separate ways because of what? Why do they feel to go their separate ways? So what has resulted in a couple separating or getting divorced? B? It is B. Problems with existing agreeably. Good. And 47, the tone of the passage may be best described as what? 
It's an analytical marking and dignan to complaining. Based on based on what you guys read. I put complaining. What did you put on, Denzel? I put complaining. It's not complaining actually. Is it a? <laughs> it is a analytical. Because in this passage, the writer is being very analytical in that he is comparing statistics from before, presenting us with the figures, and even getting into the, the, um, the effects and causes and the results. So he's being very analytical here in what he's saying. So he is analyzing the, tra the traditional family and what's happening now. And the next one was this um, this extract that we did a while ago in the previous past paper we looked at. He's a man, so basically we had a candidate going up for the Demsville area. And this was just someone, um, a speech telling us why the, mm. the constituents should vote for this particular individual. So let's go into the questions. 48 says, this speech was most likely given at a what? Political meeting. Yes, it is a political meeting because that's where the candidates would be, would be presented and here's where they would give their promises to the constituents. 49, in the extract, the writer addresses the audience as you in order to do what? Oh, Denzel, you can answer this. You know why? Because you just joined the class and we did this this passage a while ago. So it means oh. everyone here already knows the answers, but we want your answers now. I put D. For 49? Yeah. It's not, it's not, you put B as in boy? D as in dog. Oh, yes, it is D to make the audience feel he cares about them. Good. 50 says the speaker suggests that because the candidate comes from a foreign country, he will what? Be an advantage to them. Yes, see, be an advantage to them. 51, when the speaker says you need to live like valued citizens, he attempts to do what? I put B. No. Uh... The answer is actually C. He wants to change the villagers' way of life. 52, the name Damesville is suitable for the village because of what? D, as in dog. It's the not the as in dog. How are villagers named? After somebody. Uh-huh. Somebody name. Uh-huh. So look at the options now. C. Yeah, so it's C. It's the name of someone who used to live there. 53 in paragraph one. The speaker repeats the words. He's the man because he wants to do what? B. Ah, oh, it's actually not B. Miss Boy repeats his emphasis. When you tell someone, okay, he's the man. When you say that, it's because you, you want to show it. Uh, a? No. D. Is it B as in boy or D as in dog? D, D as in dog. Yes, it is D as in dog. To impress upon the audience that he's offering them the best person for the job. But I said B first, actually. Can I be B again? <laughs> Sorry, Ravi um, is distracting me here because he's asking for answers. Ravi number 50 was uh, C. We had an advantage to them. And then so the last one for you, 54. Which of the following devices is not used in this speech? A. A, very good, A point. Ravi, do you need any more answers? Oh, 
Um, do you need any more answers or you got the answers? Okay, great. And this last part is an advertisement. So it says energy efficiency tips. Number one, keep fixtures and bulbs clean. Dirt can absorb as much as 50% of the light. Number two, number two, number two, says turn off the lights when leaving our room, even if it's only for a few minutes. It's just a myth that it takes more energy to turn a light on than to leave it on. Number three, use motion sensors for outdoor lights. They are a good security measure that doesn't waste energy. Four, use lower wattage bulbs. Your lights may be brighter than you need. Five, purchase lamps with dimmer switches as you can lower the settings when less light is required. Six, place floor or table lamps in a corner. This allows light to reflect from the walls, making the room brighter without turning on more lights. And seven, use fluorescent lights instead of the incandescent lights. Compact fluorescent lights use up to 75% less energy than incandescent lights for the same amount of light and last up to 10 times longer. So they're basically telling us some ways in which, you know, we can save energy, how we could be efficient, some things that we could practice in the home. 55 says, the main purpose of this advertisement is to do what? What was the purpose of this ad? C. Yes, it was C, to encourage better energy use. Good. 56 says, which of the following is the best meaning of the word absorb as used in tip one of the advertisement? I put D. You put D as in dog? Yeah. No, it's not swallow up. Is it B? It's not B, soak up. It's got to be C. It is C, take in. When, you are, when something has been absorbed, Yes, take in. 57, which of the following practices is recommended? D. Yes, D, turning off the lights when leaving our room. 58, the advertisement emphasizes that motion sensors are important because they what? E. A, they are efficient and provide security, good. 59, which of the following statements is not made in the advertisement? B. Have the answer, boy? B. The answer is A. Low wattage bulbs use less energy. Good. And 60, the information in the ad would be most useful to who? C. C, householders. Very good. So put your total out of 60 and comment your answers. Don't tell me your, your um, sorry, your marker. Miss Adega answers from 1 to 20. Okay. So I'll call over the answers from 1 to 20. So are you correcting? Anybody who yeah. missed the answer from 1 to 20, I'm calling over the answers. 1 is D, mm -hmm. 2A, 3B, mm -hmm. 4D, 5C, mm -hmm. 6D, 7C, 8A, mm -hmm. 9B, 10C, 11D, 12B, 13C, 14C, and 15B. 16A, 17A. That's all, that's all, that's all, 16A? Yeah, 16A. Oh, what was it? I oh, because um, in RAN past, the past tense has been marked two times. RAN oh, is the past tense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we have, yeah, so the ED in past wasn't supposed to be there. Oh, okay. Number 17A, 18D, 19A, and 20C. Okay, all right. So total out of 60 and tell me your, um, your marker. I surprised myself, I got 56. Wow, congratulations. 
Yay! Thank you. That was the aim to get in your 50s. Very good. Better late than never. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On the last class, um, Ravi. <laughs> I got 49. Depends on you missed the 50 by one mark. I feel like I'll see my phone while I don't answer. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. So the aim is that you all were supposed to get um, higher than the previous week, right? So Kimberly and Jada and Hema, Felicia, what did you guys get? 52. Wow, Jaden, very good. And you um and you didn't want to do the the section on error recognition, and you end up getting everything correct. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Well, I know Felicia told me she didn't get time to do the homework. Kimberly, did you get time to do the homework? No. Okay, but you have the answers recorded, right? So that in your spare time, yeah. you could probably do the paper and then you could correct it again. Ms. Yeah. I, guess, I, guess it, I guess it's the trend in the 2000 paper, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Very good. I'll correct the rest. So what I want you all to do is that from now on, I want you guys to, um, you all have the, the blank question papers and the answers. So I want you all to keep redoing the papers because remember, multiple choice repeats itself. So how you have to revise the multiple choice is that you have to see the passage, the questions, the poem, and so on, and see the question and try to remember what the answer was. Because as I told you all, and you guys have seen for yourselves, the questions come the same all the time. They bring the same questions with the same options. So your challenge is that you guys have to try to memorize the answers. So look at the questions and try to memorize the answers as well. So you think you guys could do that? Some of you all have already done that. You guys have already started memorizing the answers so that when you see, for instance, the poem, you already know what the answers are from before. So remember, there's a very, very high possibility of things being repeated in, in your exam this year. So try your best to sit with the blank papers Try to see if you could remember the, quest, the answers to the questions. And keep redoing the papers, redoing the papers, because your aim is to remember so well that you get all 60 correct. So what I don't want from you all is that I don't want that, yes, this is our last class, but I don't want that from, that from today you guys aren't going to do any work and then you're going to wait until probably the week before the exam to do work. I don't want that happening. I want you all to still dedicate some time once a week, do some work, pretend even for your, our, our class time, maybe you could use back that same time as your study time. If every week um, you could probably do like about two or three past papers, that would be well, that would be really nice. So try to not be comfortable. Yes, you guys are peaking at the moment and don't think that, okay, I have reached and that's it. Try your best to, you know, to keep revising your work, keep redoing, looking at the blank exam paper, see if you could get back the answers and correct it because you have the answers. And you have only reached if you get 60 out of 60, right? Because the questions repeat themselves so much and your aim is to remember so well that you get all correct. That's the aim. So still use some time, still dedicate some time to go through the papers. And uh, one thing I want you all to go through as well, um, your handouts. So the handouts on literary devices, um, you guys need to know all those 17 literary devices because as you all have seen, even in the advertisement, the speeches, the comprehensions and the poems, a lot of questions come with a quota line and then they ask you what literary device it is. So if you don't know your literary devices, it would be difficult for you guys to know what the line is, um, is talking about. So your literary devices handout, 
try your best to reread that handout. Keep rereading the handout and try to memorize the definitions for every literary device. Even the handout that I gave you guys on poetry with the poetic elements, please learn that handout as well because you are going to get poems in your paper and poems are really difficult to understand at first because as we all covered in that handout, um, we have denotative language, which is a literal dictionary meaning, and then we have the connotative meaning. So you have the denotative and the connotative meaning of words and even the poem, and the connotative meaning, the higher meaning. So sometimes poems aren't meant to be interpreted literally, but there's always a higher meaning or a deeper meaning to the poem. So try to revise the poetic elements as well, because as you all know, you are going to get poems in the exam. So all the handouts and work that we have covered regarding paper one, please revisit your handouts and try to learn those things because your aim is to remember. You have um, some time again, so try your best to remember. I don't want you all to just skylark and not do your work and then the night before the exam, you're now going to pick up the multiple choice papers and review them because the brain is a muscle, right? If you don't use a brain, then what happens if you don't use muscles? It's like the rest of your body, right? It's a muscle that, you know, we tend not to exercise or practice, right? So it's like, it's like a body part. If you, if maybe you could have done a split, if you, if you aren't continuously doing it and exercising your muscles, then eventually you won't be able to do it again. And that's exactly what happens with your brain and it's one of the body parts that we underestimate. So if you aren't using your brain, if you aren't doing any work, you are going to forget. No matter if you know the work now, you will forget. Jaden? Oh, sorry, my siren. I my mic was on. <laughs> <laughs> so just remember, I want you all to keep on, you know, using your brain. If you're not using your brain, meaning that you're not doing any work, you are going to forget. Regardless of if you know the answers, no, you will forget. As long as you aren't revising, you will forget. Unless some of you have a photographic memory and it's easy for you all to just close your eyes and remember everything you read before. So, question time. Do you guys have any questions? I just wish to find out what is exam because I want to get this nonsense of home. <laughs> well, I'm actually supposed to find out by, by today, actually, because CX did say they were going to make um, a statement by today. So um, don't worry. As you all know, whenever we get something, Lyndon sends us in the WhatsApp group for you all. As long as it's from CXC, it's from a credible source, and we know it's true, we send, we send it in the WhatsApp group. So don't pay attention to other things you've seen in the group because I know like other students and stuff are sending stuff in the group, but only pay attention to um, credible sources. So only if the message comes from CXC or the Ministry of Education, and you would know so because they would use their official letterhead in the document. If you don't see the official letterhead in the document and it didn't come from CXC or the Ministry of Education, don't pay attention to the news because right now we have a lot of people who are home just bored and circulating fake news just to stir up, you know, drama and excitement in society. So only pay attention to, um, to news that are from a credible source and you guys will see this. If you're on social media, you could follow CXC's Facebook page and the Ministry of Education's Facebook page, or you could even visit their website because on the both websites, they give you news updates. So only read news from there. Don't, don't really um, pay attention to the memes and the stuff being circulated and videos that people are making up. So just be careful with, when, um, with where your information comes from. But as we get um, some feedback, we would let you all know because they would um, they would send messages to the schools. So we will let you guys know for sure. But Lyndon did tell you all last week. Do you guys remember what Lyndon was telling you all on Monday about checking um, 
he told you all about um, finding out your centers. Do you guys remember that? Yes, I was in here for that. I can't remember that. Okay, so on Monday's class, um, Lyndon was telling you all that for the private candidates, you have to log into the ORS to find out which center exams are being done. So this is on the Ministry of Education's website. It's still on portal. Yes, yeah, so he was, and he was also saying to send an email to support at the CXC support to um to check to see um to check your name. To launch it but I did all you. them stuff uh -huh. and I still not getting through with my stuff. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not sure, but if, if you all want Lennon to help, he would be willing to help you all too if you need him to, to try and do it from his end. If you're not getting through, so did they even um, email you back, send you anything? Miss, I wasn't getting ah. through either. I well, didn't I know as they learn something new, it takes just seconds to crash, and then afterwards, we have to wait for it to come back up. So I'll see if I find out from my other classes as well, if they were able to get through with this. But if you're having difficulties, you could still message Lyndon, and he would you, um, he will at least let you guys know um, what's going on, because the other private candidates will tell us as well if they were able to get through and then we'll know if the service is actually working. Working because I get through, but I don't know what to believe on. When you got through, um, Ravi, what did they tell you? Well, initially when I was in class. When Ravi he, got so, through a long time. When, oh. Yes, when he was in class, they had, when they originally sent out um, the listing of the center numbers and stuff. Uh -huh. I asked on the, um, on the portal, on the student login, and yeah. to change center numbers to see if I can log in with my information. And I eventually got them. I have my student number and my center number and everything. Oh, well, I'm sure this probably happened and just because everybody's probably rushing the system and trying to sign on and stuff. So it's probably, you know, there's probably a backlog that they're trying to sort out. Because when it is you go on you again, your personal alarm, Schedule two for exam. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I get everything on time. Okay. Because I know um, what Linda was saying is that CXC did send the draft timetable, but by this week they were supposed to actually confirm um, yeah, the timetable and stuff. So if we find out about that, we'll let you guys know as well. Yeah, if you guys have any question right now, everybody has. Don't things. worry, you we would um we, we would still have the WhatsApp group. So um we would send the message for you all in the WhatsApp group so you guys would know. Because we keep the WhatsApp group until the exam passes. Okay. So you guys will still have the WhatsApp group to send your messages and stuff. And um Linda will still communicate with you all and let you all know all the classes are finished. He would still um send you all messages regarding your exams and stuff. Cool. So you guys can still communicate um via the WhatsApp group and we would send uh, messages to you all um whatever we get from CXC. All right, Miss Adma back in the group, please. <laughs> Kimberly, um send me a number, Kimberly. Uh Miss Wright, it's on last time, 6, 8, 7. Anybody else is not in the WhatsApp group and you need to be added to the group? No, oh, everybody is in the group. So just pay attention to the WhatsApp group and the messages that you guys um, get.